your day screaming with Mike Malloy. 21 uh, past, <laughs> past the hour. Say goodbye to the middle class from uh, Prairie 2. Another Friday night fright here. Here we go. We've had an increase in the initial unemployment claims number for the second straight week. And this may or may not be bad news. It's too early to get really worried about it. We're still way below the 400,000 number that seems to indicate a failing economy these days. The numbers are seasonally adjusted, and thanks to global warming, we had no winter to speak of, causing the normal spring spike in activity to start in January. Low winter heating bills put an average of $400 per family into the economy with twice that in the Northeast. Unfortunately, high gasoline prices are taking it all back again. And the far right is screaming about hyperinflation once again because of gas prices. And this is totally wrongheaded thinking. It's common among Federal Reserve board members. This is what is spooking the stock market, that the Fed might start fighting inflation. Fighting non-existent inflation would trigger deflation and a freefall crash of the markets. Improved sovereign bond sales in Europe did calm the markets for a while. Markets did resume sliding again today, so that wasn't enough. Let's be clear. It's not about the jobs numbers. Wall Street doesn't give a crap about how many people are employed or unemployed. It's the Fed they care about. Obama is gaining, gaining political traction with the proposed Buffett rule that would force the rich to pay a minimum 30% tax on all income over a million dollars, except on municipal bond interest. This would effectively double Mitt Romney's taxes. His wife might need to get a job. Just kidding. She can stay home and hand crank the car elevator to save money. Ah, the problem is that the Buffett rule only goes halfway. History shows that the top tax rate must be at least 50% to have a stable economy. Income over about $5 million a year should be taxed at the pre-Reagan rate of 74% at a minimum. FDR wanted a 100% top tax rate, but settled for 91%. Republicans immediately started drilling holes into that rate with exemptions and loopholes under the excuse of bolstering the economy. It did just the opposite, of course, and this allowed them to call for even more loopholes. Republicans still make the same excuses today for why the rich should not only be exempt from paying their share, but with a straight face, propose paying no taxes at all, but only if you're rich. The peasants? Well, they should pay taxes, of course. The right-wingers claim 48% of Americans pay no taxes. They mean income taxes, but they don't say that. FICA taxes, Social Security, bring in almost as much revenue as the income tax does. And rich people pay in almost nothing toward that. Then there are sales taxes that have tripled since Reagan. Local taxes and fees have skyrocketed while services are cut in order to give huge tax breaks to big business. In fact, the only people who pay no taxes of any kind are the elderly confined to nursing homes. Then there is the decline in tax revenue caused from wages that have been driven down and manufacturing actively disappearing. Working Americans make half of what they did prior to Reagan. And even with 75% of women working, family income is now declining sharply. Only one in 10 households had two people working prior to Reagan. We've had massive gains in productivity in the last 30 years. But the gains have all gone to the rich. Plus, they are stealing what the middle class already had in wealth to the point that the next big downturn will eliminate the middle class entirely. PrairieNumeral2.com. That's his website. Check him out. I read today in the Times, or today or yesterday, the business section, that uh, a couple of the killer banks are doing it again. They've already started with subprime loans, bundling them and selling them off to investors. Uh, subprime loans, once again, and once again, the subprime loans, of course, are the ones made to people that just can't afford what the banks are trying to do to them. But they don't know what the banks are trying to do to them. So here, here we go again. And the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Frank, uh, what was, uh, what was the law? Uh, Barney Frank and who was the other guy that, uh, you know, the banking, um, the banking, uh, 
Act, not Banking Act, but uh, Lending, whatever the hell it was. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, that is having holes drilled in it, just like a rowboat out in the middle of a, a, a lake. They're, the Republicans are dr- drilling hole after hole after hole. And everybody in the middle class, as Prairie 2 points out, is in that in that rowboat. Dodd, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> but there they go again. The sons of bitches don't care. They just literally do not care. The banksters. And why should they? Man, when you're running a casino, did I say this the other night? You're running a casino and, and you're the house and you know you're going to win. And if you do lose, you know that the, 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 the geese are going to pay for all your losses as they do every time. We're the geese. You and me. American taxpayer. So people like the Koch brothers and Wall Street, uh, what are you kidding me? Why should they stop? That makes no sense. When we come back after this break, podcast trivia, get on the phone, 877-996-2556. Jump in. 